So you're building a concrete pool or you want to build a concrete swimming pool. The first thing that I would say about that, because this is something that I see all the time. If you have plans to build a block wall concrete swimming pool, I would encourage you to reconsider this design choice. It would be one thing if you wanted to use a liner or a membrane of some kind, in which case this is a totally legitimate option in terms of how you want to build your swimming pool. But if you are trying to build a concrete swimming pool and you're imagining some sort of tile or perhaps a plaster interior of, of some kind in this pool, what you'll find is that you can build the walls, but you'll struggle to find somebody to put plaster on and you won't really understand why. And the reason why is that pool will absolutely fail. The problem here is, imagine if you will, you build a pool out of blocks that you fill with concrete, and I build a pool out of solid concrete, one uniformly poured concrete vessel. My concern as a concrete pool builder is that if I don't do my job right, my concrete pool could crack. There's enough force being exerted on a swimming pool that even a uniformly poured concrete vessel can crack. How much stronger do you think a uniformly poured concrete vessel is versus stacked stone? What will happen is that if you have a stacked stone wall, you will have movement along the grout joints. And no matter what interior surface you use, you will experience a failure along those grout joints. And that's why if you're going to build a block wall pool, you really need to be talking about a liner or a membrane. If you're going to build a concrete pool, you need to build it out of concrete. And there's a few different ways that you can build a concrete pool. Let's talk about some of the main design elements that you would have to kind of tackle when you're talking about building a concrete swimming pool. And the first would be, well, what about the steel? You're going to need to make a steel grid for this swimming pool. And up where I'm located, most of my building was in the Pacific Northwest in Canada. And we have to build according to uh, the, the chance that whatever you're building is going to experience a seismic event. So we have to build things really strong. And in, in addition to that, we have freeze and thaw here in the winters. And it's really hard on every kind of structure. So we probably use a little more steel up here than what a lot of... Pools I see being built in the southern USA use. I'm not sure if it's just a lower standard or the pools need to be less strong. I can't, I can't say I'm not an expert for building in the southern USA, but I can tell you that when I see pools built down there, I'll often see rebar grids along the lines of 12 inch on center grids. 12 inch on center grids for something like a 10 millimeter rebar, that's not very much to me. The pools that I build and every pool that I have ever seen built uses an, a 10 millimeter rebar with an 8 inch on center grid. And it makes a really, really strong structure. And in addition to the 10 millimeter and 8 inch uh, grid, we would also use a bond beam, which would be four horizontal 15 millimeter bars wrapped in box steel every foot or so. And this is all specified by the engineer. If and, if and when you build a concrete swimming pool, you should hire an engineer to specify this for you. What if you have unusual circumstances with your area in terms of the type of soils that you have to deal with or something to that effect? Or as I mentioned before, maybe you need to build according to seismic events that might happen. You certainly don't want to go through the trouble of building a concrete swimming pool and then have it crack in half. That would be an absolute disaster. If you're able to find an engineer to hire to help you to design plans and perhaps do a site inspection or maybe some soil testing, I think that would be money very well spent. Um, in terms of the, the next thing that you'd probably have to talk about in, in for a design element would be the thickness of the concrete versus the steel that you're putting in. The, I think the thickest that you can go is eight inches on a single mat, and that allows for four inches of encapsulation on either side. So basically a four inches thick concrete, and then the steel, and then another four inches thick concrete. The steel needs to be in the center for strength. If it's not in the center, it compromises the strength tremendously. Uh, further to that, if you make something thick, like let's say you have a design element like a shared hot tub or a weir wall for a vanishing edge pool, those should probably be 12 inches thick instead of 8 inches thick concrete. So now we need to add a double mat 
of steel. A single mat is no longer enough because you'd have six inches of encapsulation on both sides and that's too much. It compromises the, the force load ability for the concrete to absorb the force load. So you need to add a second 10 millimeter mat eight inches on center. So as you can see, there's actually quite a lot going on here. When I look at pictures or see videos or talk to people building in the southern USA, their steel grids look super fast and loose to me. And I like I, I can only tell you that I would never, never have that on any of my builds or certainly not at my house. So uh, in terms of the thickness and of the, the concrete, eight inches on the walls, eight inches on the floor, 12 inches bond beam, 10 millimeter rebar, eight inch on center. That's kind of the standard that I build to. And if you do that effectively, that's gonna be strong. And I've never seen one break that's been built like that. I mean, I suppose it could happen. It's all to do with the quality of the build. Um, <clears throat> The next design element that I'm going to talk about here in terms of concrete pool building is waterproofing. And this one's so important because the average person building a concrete pool or having a concrete pool built, this never even comes into the discussion. You build the whole f stupid thing and you get all the way to the end and that's it. Nobody ever talked about waterproofing, but concrete is porous. All concrete is porous. Go pour a cup of water on the sidewalk out front of your house and watch what happens. It just absorbs it like a sponge. And that's exactly how concrete pools work. And the reason why you don't notice them just leaking like crazy is because they kind of take a big drink of water when you first fill them up. And then they're saturated and the rate of water loss slows down. But it's still leaking. It's leaking everywhere. And water passing through concrete causes damage over time. It will undermine interior surface. The whole thing is just a problem that permeates the concrete pool industry. Waterproofing should be mandatory for concrete pool construction. And if you're building a concrete pool, you had better be thinking about waterproofing. I can't imagine spending this kind of money or doing this amount of work and neglecting perhaps the single most important component of the entire thing. We want it to hold water. As it turns out, that's important when you're building a concrete pool. So waterproof your swimming pool. In terms of waterproofing, there's only a handful of options, really. You have things which are essentially are a paint-on membrane style, something like Red Guard. Uh, that's a common one, as is uh, Hydroban by Laticrete. That's another one. Um, and those ones are good in situations where all four walls of the pool extend above the water line, because as I said, they're kind of like a membrane, just picture a liner that you can tile or concrete over. That's essentially what they are. But what if you have that design element I mentioned earlier, that shared weir wall or the shared wall with a spa or a weir wall for an infinity edge pool? Well, now you have water on both sides of the concrete and that's a problem if you're talking about a membrane or a liner solution for waterproofing because they can only resist hydrostatic pressure in one direction. So if you have any of those design elements or if you're just looking for a different type of solution, then I would recommend a, a product called Basecrete because it's a flexible concrete essentially, which is entirely waterproof and it can resist hydrostatic pressure from two directions. So it's, it's very unique and it's highly useful for concrete swimming pool construction. And if you're if you're thinking of building a concrete swimming pool, you have to have waterproofing. I don't care which one you're using really, just choose the right one for the application, but you really need to be waterproofing your swimming pool. Don't let anybody convince you that, oh, I've been doing this a long time. The plaster seals it. Plaster doesn't seal anything. Plaster doesn't seal anything. So let's talk about that, the interior surface. The plaster is one option and tile was another one I mentioned. The third one, the, the red-headed stepchild of the interior surface for concrete swimming pool industry is paint. And I'm going to address that first. Like a lot of concrete pool builders, I think pretty much all concrete pool builders would agree wholesale, do not paint concrete swimming pools. And for the most part, I would agree. It's a very low-end solution. It looks low-end. It doesn't really last it doesn't really make the pool waterproof. It might make it more water resistant, but it definitely doesn't make it waterproof. It's harder to put on than you think it is. And by that, I mean it has a high failure rate for all kinds of different reasons. And you have to apply it more regularly than you think. And at some point, you're going to say, this painting just sucks and I don't want it anymore. And now you have to sandblast your pool. And that's another huge expense that you possibly didn't need to take on had you not painted your pool in the first place. And I think that's why 
for the most part, you'll hear people say, don't paint concrete swimming pools. And for the most part, I agree with it. It's, it's a really a poor choice and it just performs poorly and it looks bad the whole time doing it. So the thing that I like is plaster. Plaster's kind of been the mainstay for swimming pools for 2,000 years, and it probably will be for a while. And all plaster is is white sand and white cement, and you trowel it really smooth. And that's why I say it's not waterproof, because it's sand and cement. And as we already talked about, concrete is porous. So even if you trowel it really smooth and it has a, a water-resistant finish to it that only lasts a short period of time, and it's still only resistant. It's still not waterproof. It still absorbs water when you pour water on it. So I like plaster, but it's realistic. Or you have to be realistic in understanding that it doesn't last as long as you think it, it does. Like the average plaster is 15 years on a swimming pool, but realistically it needed to be replaced at the seven to 10 year range when it was no longer smooth to the touch. Water passed through it too much too much of the cement component dissolved away and it left the aggregate behind, just the sand. And now it's rough and it hurts your feet and it rips your bathing suit. And it's not really water resistant at all. It's not really doing anything. So if you're going to plaster, which I do like, except that you're going to have to plaster before it falls apart. Like don't wait until your pool plaster is falling apart to redo it. As soon as it's not smooth anymore, it needs to be redone. And on average, that's about seven years. Um, the best interior surface for a concrete swimming pool, by far, hands down, is tile. The Possibly the only disadvantage of tile is that it's immensely expensive to buy and install in a swimming pool. Um, the, the idea with tile is that it has an impressively long service life. In ideal situations, if you were to manage to install this tile perfectly, that tile will still be serviceable 50 years from now easily. And as I just told you, plaster is like seven years, 10 years maximum. So 50 years, that is one heck of a long time. When you start looking at the additional costs of tile, but you look at it over a 50-year service cycle with perhaps only grout needing to be done in between, well, I mean, that might be worth it. Where you get in trouble is if you go to tile your swimming pool, but you didn't follow the previous step and you don't have a waterproofing system in place, chances are you're not going to get 50 years. You're not going to get anywhere near 50 years. And I see it happen all the time. I get contacted by people every single year who have a, a, an entirely tiled swimming pool, sometimes with massively expensive glass tiles, and it's failed completely within a year. And it has to be completely stripped out and you have to go back to the drawing board. And that's, that's a real heartbreaker. Like I feel bad when I, when I see that happen to people. But the regularity of which I see people pursuing things like tile without understanding that you need a waterproofing system. I mean, it's more common to see that than it is to see somebody coming to the table armed with the information that they already know. Look, I need to waterproof this or very likely this tile is not going to last as long as it's supposed to be lasting. Like I'm investing in this interior surface if you're doing tile. You need it to last. You need to make sure that you're doing it right. So these are just the first things that come to mind when I start talking about building concrete swimming pools. And as you can see, there's a lot more going on here than just a hole in the ground. Like there's a lot of moving parts and pieces with any swimming pools and concrete pools really, really, they're the top of the pile. The best swimming pools in the world, the oldest swimming pools in the world, the fanciest swimming pools in the world are all concrete swimming pools. If you found this information helpful, please be sure to like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And you can check out my website, swimmingpoolsteve.com.